This topic is going to be on gender dysphoria or dysphoria uh, for people perhaps suffering with a, a crisis of uh, identity, whether that's uh, in the mind, in the emotion, in the in the uh, heart of the person, in the life of any individual. Uh, I'm going to give some thoughts on what dysphoria is and for people to consider that uh, suffering with this uh, condition. Um, now it's I've looked up the word. So uh, dysphoria is a, um, a condition of anxiety within a person's uh, soul of their identity, of their gender, of their um, what they are, what sex they are. Or. So I'm going to be looking at the components, as many as I can consider, and looking at some facts. I, um, I'm only going to be sharing facts. I'm not going to be sharing any any uh, conjecture. It's going to be based on my life experience and knowledge, I'm not an expert, but I'm just inviting and sharing some thoughts to consider with people suffering from this uh, affliction. It's not something I personally uh, have suffered with, but it's not something beyond my comprehension and uh, empathy. So I'd just like to, any anybody who would like to consider these thoughts, uh, this invitation is for you to hear the matter out and consider what I'm sharing on uh, dysphoria. Um, I looked up the word, it's a very elusive word in the dictionary, but medically it is, it's just called dysphoria. It is um, the diagnosis of a gender crisis, so, but it's been labelled as GD, gender dysphoria. Uh, so, I'm going to look, so I'm looking at that subject in, not in great detail, but um, and possibly not the most intellectual delivery or concise delivery, but um, in my weakness I'm going to share some thoughts and knowledge and some, uh, just some uh, outreaching, reaching out in, in care really for people with this, to try and give them some comfort, to give them some understanding uh, not 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 to state that I'm the expert and to take my advice or take this knowledge as fact but just to examine this and consider this knowledge uh, openly and uh, objectively before it's dismissed uh, for any bias or any any reason whatsoever so if you're a uh, suffer of uh, dysphoria, you're going through a crisis, a personal crisis, you've come across this video. Uh, I have a few things to, that I've observed in my life of, of components of this uh, condition manifesting in other people. Um, now if you're, uh, I'm trying to consider the, the different levels of suffering because everybody could per go through their life go through some sort of identity crisis but dysphoria is not really it's more of an extreme symptom um, severity so we're looking at uh, inner turmoil inner anxiety inner conflict which is going to affect the mind the life everything and one of the um, documentaries, of real life documentaries I studied quite closely was Kenny Everett. He had it, this exact um, crisis in, in his life. And I'm sure all um, this is something that people with homosexuality uh, experience. It, it, it's, it's got to be on that um, spectrum of uh, anxiety and inner turmoil. And another person was uh, Kenneth Williams. If you if you speak to uh, read autobiographies of his closest friends, his 
his off his real life personality and his inner conflict with uh, a similar sort of identity crisis or, or or the inner turmoil of his condition his inner makeup his genetic condition and um, they are really fascinating very you know very wonderful people very very hurt very wounded um, but nevertheless like e every person we're all we're all faulty we've all got um, we've all got problems that we inherit but that doesn't dismiss the severity of suffering of uh, a person going through a gender identity crisis so considering all the levels is it is it really severe is it something that is going to be passed through and overcome by um, the average person but is there a, a majority or a minority in a bracket that it catches out and they fall into this uh, pitfall if you like of this affliction it, they actually it fits and they find themselves in this dysphoria this dystopia of a lifestyle this um, troubled inner hell this um, confusion and which could lead to despair which could lead to suicide and hopelessness and uh, heartache and pain and misery for all concerned so this is not a light matter so I just want to share some uh, knowledge now I'm a, uh, a Christian believer I have uh, absolute faith and confidence in, in, in knowledge in logic in common sense in life in all the good things in life and in the Word of God and in the life of the Creator, the Giver of Life and His Word is um, true, it's consistent and it teaches knowledge, it teaches what's in a man's heart it teaches of uh, right and wrong, it teaches of just and unjust, it teaches of uh, dystopia and uh, paradise it, it, it teaches opposites and extremes and it teaches truth Simpl simply that it teaches common sense and truth and how to how to measure truth because it's full of wisdom it's full of knowledge it's full of uh, God's inspiration it's God's living water and it needs to be considered and believed before that living water is received and understood. And all, all truth is living water. Uh, and all truth is freely available in the world. But it gets confused with uh, many sponsorship, many hands, many, many wins, many agendas, many people fanning the overall idea behind something to reinforce what something is so I'd like you to consider just to look openly and honestly what, what is taking place and, and to do that you really have to consider many many components so I'm trying to offer as many components as I can cast before the table that can, so people can come along and rifle through and see if there's anything there that makes sense that will that will help and um, so I want to just about uh, some things I've noticed over the over my life and that's the the political voice and the nature behind that voice of uh, homosexuality and um, the nature of homosexuality there's there's uh, there's on, on the on the, on the extremes of the male and the female side and I'm not going to get into transgender I'm just going to stick to the the basic left and right um, polarities of man and, male and female male, a male homosexual and a female homosexual 
or females that accept that they're females and males that accept that they're males and uh, would uh, consider themselves homosexual in their given sex whether that's male or female, the male sex or the female sex and predominant now the majority of what you would see um, on a, the LGBT community and the gay community, the gay pride and the gay festivals and the gay clubs, you would probably possibly see more of the, and I'm not an expert, but you you would see more of the feminised homosexuality. The you won't see so much of the dominant alpha, violent, aggressive, secretive homosexuality that like to dominate like the, the men in prisons, the bullies. These men are men. They 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 will have sex with anything. But but predominantly they're homosexual. And a lot of the money behind the commercial sponsoring and idea of homosexuality, even through the military, even through um, it, it, there's testimonies of uh, homosexual bonding in in military groups. Um, so it, it's it's got a wind behind it. It's got it's got help. The idea has help to legitimise what that idea is and to for that idea to take root in other people so it le legitimises what what that person's born with within their nature because that person is prone and there's a lot of components so I'd like you to consider these components now consider the celebrity world, the media consider the food and additives and consider uh, the status, political, social, correctness and media attention, the, um, all the areas of media attention, uh, pop, Hollywood, everything that popularises something, everything that speaks on behalf of, of, of everybody else, for everybody else and it creates the wind, it sets the price it says what everybody else is thinking or it presumes to to think and it brazenly goes off telling telling the world this is what the people think this is what, what it is You or commercials, oh everyone's buying this product you better get down to the shops before it before it flies off the shelves that sort of public Fanned image. If you look all behind advertising agencies, then it's not a secret. They're all out to get your money out of your children. Nick Nickelodeon is completely dedicated to merchandising of um, cartoons and all, all, all the merchandise that goes with it, all the paraphernalia that goes with the cartoons. And it's all all the psychology is to take money out of the parents' pocket. It's aimed at their parents, it's aimed at their children to make money. It's not aimed at their children because they love their children and care for their parents. It's aimed to make money. Like all videos, like all Hollywood films, like all music, it's aimed to make money. These people are given a, a little platform and a career and a little little world, a golden world of their own, a little ticket of the town, a little compartment on the bus, on, on the on the high on the high flyer plane, or being towed behind it or another layer down, whatever comprom whatever level they're willing to compromise, they will get a piece of the cake, the pride of life. And these people will be elevated and made into idols. They'd be like rock gods and worship by the public, and then it'd be found by the public media. Then the homosexuality creeps into it. So, just giving some people some things to consider. 
Now the word of God is, it says that uh, teaches that knowledge puffeth up. It makes you proud and big headed and makes you believe that you you know everything, that you know what's right, that you're set in like an iron bar, that you're unmovable. And it puffs you up, it makes you feel like a big big tree. But that knowledge can be tripped over by something really simple, like something that people haven't considered before. So I am gonna, I am offering something uh, small for people to, that possibly haven't considered, and I'm doing that in love. And the word of God says that charity edifieth, that love, considering the, doing things for the right reasons is edifying. Edifying means it increases its truth. It remains when you receive it. You can build upon it. It's, it's like firm. You can get a hold of it. You can get a grip on it. And if you couldn't, it wouldn't be edifying. It would be. You would. It would be. You'd be double-minded. You'd be vacant. You'd be lacking. You'll be lacking in that knowledge. Now, if you 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 can hold on to a false idea. But it won't remain if you test it. But true knowledge, in truth, in love, remains. Because it's simply true and it's given in the spirit where it's, it's, given, for, it's given freely. And it's, given, it's not given for any other motive than to love. And now, the world, sin is the cause of all... Um, problems in life, we're all sinners, whether we're homosexual, whether we're gender, gender neutral or whatever we consider ourselves, whatever our own idea is of what life is, we're all sinners, we're all imperfect, that's what sin is, it's imperfection and this is a genetically inherited trait that we all inherit, imperfections, plants, animals, all have genetic imperfections. They all carry that a record of their history right back to their beginning. Just like human beings have got a record in their DNA, in their, in their code, in their life stream. And the environment affects the way that that code unfolds in, in the environment of, of that, um, those parent strains that it came from. It come from two complete lines of, uh, of blood which had two complete strands of um, their, their parents' lifeblood in with, with all the record passed down through the seed from one seed to another seed and that's generation and generational. So after years and years and years, even in the small amount of time, not not like Darwin's evolution, but by the evolution within itself, within a species' own self, there's a development and it, it evolves. Uh, not not in the sense it evolves from one species to another. That's a, a false idea. That doesn't scientifically measure up to what scientifically does measure up, like plants, like human beings, like the evidence in life shows that Darwinis, Darwinism is false and it's a made up idea to fit what the idea, the false idea has been placed because the idea is a lie. So then, then you have to have a full, you have to have full science and false knowledge to substantiate that lie because that lies against what is true. What's true is creation, because the facts are evident for children to measure. It's freely available for every, anyone to consider and weigh up, and not rely on an expert, but just to trust what's before their eyes, and to trust their own intelligence and ability to reason and measure these things simply. So over years and years, we've had this sponsoring of anti-what's right, anti-what's true, anti-knowledge. Because knowledge sets you free. Knowledge gives you life. Knowledge gives you liberty. Knowledge gives you power over your 
yourself and your own life. And if you're robbed of that, you'll put your trust in other, what other people tell you this is and what other people, what other experts tell you that is. And once the expert says that's what it is, that's what everybody will believe until someone comes along and painstakingly has to overturn all those years of lies. Now this has happened generations. There's been things that have been on the table and it's been the norm and the things that have been on the table that are true, that have remained on the table for generations and suddenly they were not true anymore and then generations forgot about it was ever true and then you get generations getting used to some other idea and it's normal and it, everybody accepts it as true and then it'll be turned over and it go, it swings around about. The truth is consistent and it remains. It just needs to be considered and evaluated. So if we look look through the uh, let's look through the pop pop world is is basically the sponsoring of this uh, gender confusion, this changing of ideas, as well as it developing in the environment and being encouraged and individually people learning about it and coming to what people believe it is trying to think it is other than what it what it actually is so unless you consider what the actual truth is and come to that truth by yourself openly your your only your only other option is remaining on all the other ideas that you are given, that they are true, but if they're not quite helping and they're not quite adding up or making sense completely that they're true, there's something wrong about it, there's something missing about it. And you may very well uh, sense that, you may still be confused, you it may not, uh, the cap not, may not quite have fitted, it may only partly make sense to you. So if we go back to the 80s, we 70s, 80s, we've, we, there's always been this culture of this, um, it, it's an anti-establishment, anti-law, anti-right, anti-moral, anti-Christian, anti-lawful, rebellious nature and spirit. We've all got it. We're all born with that nature in some degree. And that has a wind of power and money and influence behind it. And that which is behind it isn't necessarily interested in these things, but it will be able to make money out of the people who take up these things and are caught in the thick. And they're made merchandise out of the confusion. Then they come up with medical conditions. Then they make money out of the, the process. Then they make money out of the merchandise and all the pop music, then all the films and all the tragic uh, stories that they will hold up and, and show as inspirational movies to help other people in their dysphoria and come into their gender fluidity. And then they try and sponsor the idea into the future generation, all to undermine that which is moral, that which is true and that which is right that which is holy and that which is free and given of God. Now when any sexual act is performed against that which God's designed in nature for a man and a woman to, to uh, consummate their love, their marriage, their relationship, their union, and produce uh, life, if they choose, you know, that's good, that's what God has ordained. Unfortunately, some of us are born with problems and sickness and it doesn't go off to start, but that doesn't mean that the Creator doesn't understand these, these problems and he's not beyond comprehension. There's only one man in this, uh, that's ever lived that understands completely homosexuality, whatever sex, because he suffered all these anomalies, all these imperfections, all these things in life that cause pain and misery and dysphoria and disassociation and misery and pain and anxiety and despair all the things caused by injustice and sin which develops in our DNA 
that one man, that, that Lord, that God, that man from heaven, the Lord and Creator, came in, in the flesh and suffered these things for every single person, not just in his generation, but all the generations uh, be before him and preceding him, and all those after him, and all those to come in our futures, in our history. He atoned, he suffered, he took upon every single fault and problem and consequence. And he suffered that in a garden. He digested that, he drank every last drop of everyone's suffering. Digested that suffering out of love. Not because he, not because he, he deserved it, he was sinless, he was holy, he was perfect, he was God. He didn't even need to come to earth. But he had to come to earth because he's faithful and he created life. And he died to show that life that he loves it. And that he loved it, he has loved it, and he has fixed it if it would believe and receive the remedy. Receive the word, receive the testimony, receive the life, receive the healing, receive the understanding. But you need to believe and fear God before and trust God. Trust in he that knows all things and has loved and loves and you can receive that love and understanding in Christ. And he suffered all that and I am not that, um, I'm not an expert. I can only uh, invite people to, to seek him out and seek his understanding and I will share the understanding, the small and the little understanding that I've been given. And that's basically the, the commercialization of this uh, movement, the feminizing of man. Um, throughout my life, I, I, I've seen it in pop, in comedy, like the two Ronnies, and shows like that, Benny Hill and Kenny Everett. Um, and then I can think of uh, musicians, uh, Gary Newman, David Bowie, uh, Mark Allman, Sisters of Mercy, Iggy Pop, The Cult, The Pesh Mode, um, Erasure, all the, all the gothic stuff, uh, New Model Army, Balaam and the Angel, um, lot, lots of, uh, lots of sort of feminised identity idols given popularity and status and fame and held up in the public eye's image you see and then it then people think that they could associate to something ah oh, that's me you know i'm this and what they don't consider it's their genetic it's genetically been nurtured and cult cultivated like um farmed and there's if you you um now, I've studied organic um, growing, nutrients, hydroponics, all agriculture, all horticulture, arable farming, genetics, breeding, and cultivating on, in, on uh, artificial environments, natural environments, all, on all levels. And I know that genetic inheritance, and I also know of the the manufacturing of uh, plant foods and what they contain. I also know what uh, plants live off and what's it naturally produced in the soil. And one of those components is hormones. Now, a lot of, there's a lot of genetic modification components in some plant foods. There's a lot of hormones added to give, to give the the unnatural plant more flavour because it um, simulating nature you're trying to create the wonderful fresh homegrown um, produce so you add you have to add you have to recreate that environment indoors so that encourages healthy growth that encourages healthy seeds that encourages a healthy prodigy and you can um, improve the 
the strain and you can it can become breeding that which is good and you can leave behind that which is bad and you can select the more resistant the more strong and you leave behind the weak whereas in the human race it's a whole diverse extreme of the strong and the weak and the weak has been cultivated and exploited because that which is dominant has been around through history and it's in, it's in every generation that dominant leading force of that which is against everybody's freedom, everybody's rights and it wants to own it and that is always in the shadows lurking and it likes to control and shape people's thoughts and what they, what they, what they think, what they believe and all these things need to be considered and it's all com all apparent in the uh, the fruits are apparent in the um, pop world in the Hollywood and how this idea is it's not a reflection of the truth it's a reflection of what is portrayed to be true it's given a bit of help it's given a bit of leaving it's given a bit of assistance because it's against nature it's against God it's an offence to God these acts wouldn't be shown um, approved in it, to children it, it's just completely unnatural and to encourage children to have a lifestyle choice is robbing them of what they are and it causes confusion because it's a lie and this lie is sponsored and heavily sponsored because it goes against all that's morally right and it's an offence to God and that's, that's, that, this is the main proponent behind the powers of the world. They're Antichrist and they're Luciferian. They worship um, pagan gods. Uh, Lucifer, the devil, they actually uh, commune with spirits. And they, they have influence and power over the commercial and um, financial world. And what what would you see on telly? What you everything that that's on this world is owned by these people, these powers, and these corporations, and these conglomerates and monopolies, and they're the voice. So you need to consider that, and you can need to consider also the word the word of God, and the word of God clearly teaches that because men are rebellious, generationally against Him, that comes out in the code. And all that code is bred in generationally and each generation gets more perverse and corrupt. So when these children are born, we're born prone the wrong way depending on what family line we've come from. If we've come from a strong monogamous background and a Christian sort of way, you know, the, the, the standard old... Uh, what what was what was what had been one time common in England was, was the man and wife, husband and wife, little divorce rate, and that was the norm. There was little else. Um, <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, there was little else known about by the public, although homosexuality in these. Um, Gender and genetic anomalies have always existed. These conditions have always been buried away. Someone's always suffered these things. There's somebody always suffering something in silent because it's not understood. So I'm just trying to offer some, you know, understanding. And the Word of God clearly says that um, when a generation turns from the truth, it becomes perverse. It becomes corrupt. If you were to suddenly throw your lifestyle away and pick up a, a wild cultic um, religion following some person and then following all their commands and obedient to their instructions to live uh, their idea of the so-called uh, euphoric perfect lifestyle or their idea of uh, heavenly bliss and the kingdom of God on earth and you followed it, that would, and you, you raised children in that, your children would eventually be bred into that. You'd look at Mormon families and you look at um, those sort of Quakers and how their 
generationally become, look at the Jewish race, you know, how they were called a God, chosen a God, and taught something which principally changed them. It changed their inner makeup. So there's a good, there's a good, there's a negative and a positive. Just like um, uh, dysphoria will affect people, it, some people it affect negatively, some people it affect positively. It depends what, what your perceptive is on, on, on being honest with yourself and rec accepting what's true um, soberly, without emotion, without... Um, letting your own ideas drive you or your own feelings or what you think or that you're hurt and frustrated and in pain and um, I, my advice would be would be uh, don't completely put your trust in anybody but to carefully measure all expert um, opinions and take take truth from whatever opinion you're given and uh, hold on to that which is true and sift out that which is in error um, so I'm not, you consider the media fanning of um, the, the demasculization of man and then the the putting down of women because that, 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 that naturally that's always been portrayed that, um, and, it, and it's true uh, that um, women have been treated like um, you know, second, second best creatures in a in an unjust way, in an unfair, um, biased way by the predominant selfishness of man and and the world and mammon and making money over the family values and God's values, God's way of life, God's way for man rather than man's way f for our lives. God has given us freedom to live in peace and happiness and joy and to experience life and creation. But God knows better than anyone that will, some of us start really messed up. But it's not impossible for us to achieve what God has planned for all, all, all people. But that remedy has to come supernaturally by the grace and power and love and mercy of Jesus Christ. And I, I simply haven't got that. No psychologist and no psychiatrist can offer you that. No book, no self-help book can teach you that. I can only share a bit of fruit, a bit of water that I got from the well, that I got from the jar, that I got from the, the everlasting picnic hamper, and I'm placing it on the table for free. Um, but it's available for everybody to go and help themselves. The Lord is um, outstretched to receive the broken hearted, the, the hurt, the afflicted. He came to deliver the captive, heal the sick, set free the prisoners, set at liberty and those that are captive and uh, heal those that are bruised, and wounded and crying and hopeless. So if you're a hopeless in despair, don't don't be despair. Just look up and be glad that you're you you're, you. If you look to Christ, your redeemer, your redemption draweth nigh. And then, and my my invitation with if 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 you sense that, if you you discern that in your heart and mind and spirit, grab it. You know, run and run and don't stop until you know Jesus Christ and you know. That he died to save you on the cross, and he can fix all your problems. I like, I'd like Pete. I, the one thing I really believe needs to be considering is the media hype, the sponsor, the nature, the power, the money behind all these gay rallies, all this education. You know, it it seeps into the education. Um, oh, it's normal now. Well, these things are already planned before the idea takes root. This is like. Um, we're imitating natural grassroots movements and it's try to replicate them. So it places a seed, an idea on the table and it waits for it to take root. But it has to plant it in somewhere something familiar and similar so it can take so it has some legitimacy and the legitimate area is the confusion of the, the natural person when they're born and what they inherit in their DNA. And then it's exploited with this lie 
which matches it and they call it, oh, gender dysphoria. And you go, oh, I've got gender dysphoria. Then you fall into that tag, you see, and then you're, you're, then you trust it and you believe it because it's got truth in it, you see, because you're unhappy and it's some somebody knows what they're talking about, so it's got authority. But then they don't quite give you the full truth, and then, and then suddenly a few years later, you, you still got the problems. You still you're still unhappy. You're still unfulfilled, and you're you're. Your freedom and your happiness in your um, association isn't bringing you that fulfilment. Isn't bringing you. Isn't isn't giving you what it's promised. And you you remain hoping for oh it'll get better or a remedy or some other idea. And you may not want. No one else is speaking about it. So you may not want to say anything. And that's how lies work. Oh, I, I don't. Everyone else seems to be happy about it. I think I'll keep my mouth shut. Just go along with it. And if you can't look at the world honestly and see that it's evil and it's corrupt, and it will exploit you and destroy you, walk all over people, it doesn't care about you. And it's done that generationally with thousands of lives. So if you care, if you really care about yourself, you love your body, you love your self. I, I would invite you to love and fear God because there's no, there's no one else loves you better than God has loved the way that God loves you and God has loved you you just don't know God's love so he can't love you because you're outside of his love because you've denied his, his word, his truth what is obvious his glorious creation and men chase their own ideas in rebellion against what's true what's lawful, what's right, what's moral and they and they overlook their own imperfection, as a, as if God doesn't isn't aware of that. As though God's oh, God's overlooked that. God's made you like that to make you miserable. Well, no, God's allowed sin and come and and entered into a world of sin, being holy, and died for it, so he, so he could restore that which is broken, which chose to be broken. You're inherit you we've all inherited bad choices of our parents and good choices. And we've each got that in us to do a good choice and a wrong choice. And all the time we remain on this earth we will make good choices and wrong choices. We will we will make mistakes. We will believe in mistakes. But if you're honest and you reevaluate things and reconsider and not take anyone's word for it and trust in your abilities to measure things and consider and consider that it, it's so easy to be deceived nobody knows anything and then you have to consider well who does know who, who can you trust for the answer then you realise then you start thinking outside the box well, there can only be God. If you, and if there's no God, well, then there's no point. If there's no point, there's no intelligence. If there's no intelligence, there's no love. There's no, there's no purpose. But the li life screams out purpose all around you. Life is intelligent. It's designed and created. It's beautiful. And it's beyond our comprehension. We can only measure it like children with... Uh, tadpoles in a jar and wonder at it and we can become intelligent and puffed up see knowledge puffs up oh well, suddenly we're gods we can do we can do a better job than the lord we can make a perfect society oh, okay let let's throw god out and let, let's let's say gender fluid right but what 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 people don't see is that, that it, it's even robbing homosexuality of their their gender so that there's no homosexual anymore because you're gender neutral, so you can't have the LGB gender neutral society because it cancels itself out, it's a complete lie and hypocrisy and it's been sponsored so don't be um, fooled by that because that will rob you of your peace and your happiness and your future and you'll be tired in with the same lump and pit of deception a lot of people can get deceived and led up the garden path and waste their lives 
you need to consider that. You can you can spend your whole life up going wrong. You can buy a map, get in a car, and get yourself lost. You might have a map, doesn't mean you know where you're going. You need to know where where you are before you know where to navigate. And then you know where you've got to know of places where to get to. Or how to how to discover and, and, and keep a record. Which is why you got a map. So you have to visit these locations. But you can still get lost. And you can trust um, your own idea of what the map is if you get a bit confused. Um, you can misinterpret things and you can get misled. You could be sold a, a false map. Um, so there's a lot, so many things to consider uh, in life about our own lives. They're too complicated for any one person to understand and measure our surroundings, our inheritance, um, our circumstance and what it is we're actually personally studying because it might it, it's easy to put all things in one bracket but you could put a thousand pieces in a bracket and they'll all be completely different and unique and not quite fit they have similarities in that bracket but there's, there's not one thing the same in that bracket that has in common with all the others they're all different but they're, they're, they've been put in a bracket with one one thing in common that they're confused and they're hurt so it can shape the uh, image of what it is and all this um, Hollywood reinforces it the pop culture, the money and uh, and then you get the other extreme with masculate, the masculation of women they're putting women on the pedestal oh, creating fem feminism oh, you women are all hard done by let's hard all these women are hard done by let's hard do women and then in a few generations we we put them above men so we put them under men's feet because Matt God created um, men and women to be equal but the man the man to be predominant with the woman but not 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 to dominate the woman and walk all over but to treat as an equal because they're, they're poles apart, they're opposite polarity, so they need mutual respect and love for one another to to live in a fair society, in a kingdom that's, which is lawful and right and just. And all these things undermine that lawful right and justice for those people. Um, Legitimising homosexuality doesn't ill uh, illegitimise um, monogamy and monogamy has nothing to do with homosexuality it's, it doesn't argue against it, it's just not it it's not old, it's not fair it's just one's right and one's wrong and the one that's wrong can't accept it's wrong because it can't accept that it's a, it's a genetic problem and that, that, that is a personal affliction that that individual is suffering with and, they, and the only one to remedy that is God that doesn't make God wrong that doesn't make uh, couples who want to want to get married, man and wife, and have a family and I mean married, joined together as one flesh to unite sexually and have a family and commit in love to that family whether they're Christian, whether it's a Christian u unity in faith, in God in the knowledge and the, the love of God and the blessing of God or whether it's in, in transgression and ignorance and unbelief and those two people love each other and raise a, loving, raise a family to the best of their ability and to their conscience it's the same thing it's just that one's lost and without the knowledge of God and it's um, choosing to remain in sin because it's rejected Jesus Christ so the whole world remains under condemnation, whether you're homosexual, whether you're um, monogamous, whether you're transgender, gender neutral, whatever you consider yourself as. If you, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ and you're not born again, you're under condemnation for rejecting the love and truth of God, the Creator, 
the loving Saviour, the Son of God, the Word of God, the Lord, who died to suffer. His father, God the Father sent his Son to die, and his Son willingly claimed to die for his Father, for the love of creation, for the love of his creation, and that which he created. He knows it personally. He knows everything personally where everything is in any given minute, it's all before him eternally and that salvation is today, it's free and it's a real living reality, a spiritual gift that can be received and touched upon and met and uh, that, that's just through belief and trusting in, 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 in Jesus Christ and this uh, continual affront against law, against freedom, against the family, against morals, against the pr all good principles and it robs people of a true understanding that, that um, Christians aren't against, they don't hate homosexuals, they uh, love homosexuals, there's a, a lot of um, Christians that have come from that background, of all backgrounds, you know, Christians are sinners. They're not holy moly Joes who live perfect, holy lives. They just receive Jesus Christ and believe and trust him. And they love people because they've received the love and forgiveness of God. And they're unworthy of it. And they desire to reach out to all people, whether they're believers, whether they're deceived, in another religion, whether they're confused, whether they're homosexual, whether they're murderers, whoever they are, they're a lost soul that God has died to save them. And that's a Christian's love, that's a gift of God. And that's only uh, that that love can only come from God. That's not a love that can man can practice by following a set of bits of rules and oh if I do this, if I protect if I behave lovingly, therefore I'm loving. That's superficial. You got to have the real. You got to have the real thing, because the real thing stands the test of time. And it meet everything in its path, even if it gets knocked down, it'll get back up again. You can't keep a Christian down. You can't keep the truth down, because it's reliable and consistent. Gender identity, feminising of men. It's all been sponsored and then it's going to be commercially hyped and then it'll be legitimised. So if you're, you're getting caught up in that and confused, it's probably because you're following what people think if you're a young person. And it's more than likely going to affect teenagers the most, young adolescents, because that, that, they're the people that be targeted because their parents won't have an eye on them. Their parents will be steered by the status quo and the voice. Oh, it must be okay. So depending on your parents, depending on your upbringing, you may not have those um, uh, that knowledge and to consider in your evaluating and making a choice in your life. You may be taken advantage, you may be exploited by the, the lack of knowledge or the vulnerability of not knowing things, of being innocent, of being uh, naive, of being taken advantage of, of not being provided for being lied to and exploited. I'm trying to uh, re remedy that for anybody who would it, who'd accept it. So I would invite people to consider all these, all this sponsoring in films um, and music of the switching up, turning topsy turvy in of the world because it's anti-law, it's anti-moral, it's anti-what's right. And then look at think, look at the happiness in people. Look at nature, what is natural. Just because something, just become, nature becomes twisted. If you watch The Simpsons and look at all the three-headed fish because of the nuclear reactor of Mr. Burns, well then you, you know that nature can be changed into something else. You can affect nature. You can treat something really miserably and breed it in that misery. And it will breed it, breed and breed to become more and more miserable. You can breed a generation to become stupid and unable to think for themselves, and to only and to only fear 
of not following that which they've been led to follow and they do it automatically because they've been conditioned see when you're young and you're open there's a certain period you take it in and then, it clo then the lid closes and then you're stuck in that you can become set like a, a potter's vessel and you remain like that until you have a break or something changes you something changes your mind something rocks your life overturns your your error breaks your pot bursts your bubble shatters your illusion and the truth is rewarding it's refreshing it may hurt it may make you cry it may make you stomp but once you swallow it once you swallow that bitter pill and accept it and be grateful for it and it, then it's the then it's the living water and the freedom and of, of what the truth does to a person. It's it releases them. It releases the burden of guilt, of fear, of being taken advantage of not having that understanding. So I can only encourage people to study these things free. So consider genetic inheritance, your environment, the influence of of that environment in the world, in the mainstream popular image think of your the conditioning of your growing up at school and the social conditioning and all the fingers and hands in behind that in that generation and how that grows and grows and grows and look at what's in food and what's in water and then look at all the practice in throughout history where people manipulate food manipulate medications mani manipulate the atmosphere put chemicals in the atmosphere just to change people's behaviour, to control people's behaviour because it's got its own idea of what what the world wants to be like, what they want the world to be like. So consider what is the truth, what is what should the world be like, what's just and fair, and who's steering the world and is it just and fair and is it right? Or is it selfish? Is it only out for itself? And are you one of those people? Do you just want, want, want to be out for yourself so you can get your own way at the expense of the truth, blindly stomping over what's good and moral in the face of God? And then, and then, then not realise that you are... The people that sponsor and pay for this are abusers of children. They rape and murder children. They treat women like dirt like models, like putty producing models for their, their own their own pleasure, their own grandeur. And there's diverse amounts of this sick perversion in the world, it dominates and it lives in the shadows, it lurks in the shadows and it attacks the, the sweet, the sweet, vulnerable, soft, new families it likes to get, get get its ideas into, get its venom into and exploit and shape their that family's life away from what's what's natural and what's good and what's right and what's holy, what's pure, what will bring happiness and the good fruit of life. Amongst all the bad things we suffer in life, life's not perfect. But God is perfectly holy and faithful to carry any any person, any any soul through any difficulty, through any life experience, into joy, into happiness, into fulfilment, continually, forever. So I'm going to close there with my uh, thoughts with uh, gender dysphoria and consider the components of the monopolising of the world, where all the idea comes from, all the sponsoring. Ask honestly, does it bring happiness, does it bring fulfilment, is it a real fulfilment or is it a rebellion? Is it really honest about itself, Is it? does it stack up in a court of law, justly? And does that, does that make people who speak out against it homophobes or genderphobes, does it make them wrong? Does one person's right cancel another person's right? Because we've all got a right to do right and wrong. So people who do right have got a right to speak out against that which is wrong. But that which is wrong won't like it and they're attacked that which is right. And dig their heels in. 
and start parading and banging their drums and uh, and then you'll get people come along and go right we can make money out of this group these these pack we can exploit this we 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 can shape we can shape this whole town and we can use them against everyone else against families against choice against freedom and against god almighty because all the world is self-centered and it hates God and if you're one of them you, you're, you'll pay the price if you don't want to be one of them you can escape through Jesus Christ the truth and you just you just have to seek that in faith so I'm just going to close there consider jet dysphoria consider, consider, consider what is causing it within your life And uh, it is the purpose of life to be perfect and happy. Is it all for you, or is 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 there other things to consider about life? Of you know everybody's life rather than just your own. You know what's the purpose of life? Do you know the purpose of life? If you don't know the purpose of life, why don't you know the purpose of life? Why does nobody know the purpose of life yet? Why are there so many opinions? Why are there so many? religions why there so many truths and are there so are there so many truths is there is there only one truth is there only one reason is there only one purpose is there only one god is there only one creator is there only one man man and woman is there only one sex man and female that produce one seed like they've always done because two men can't produce anything, two women can't produce anything. Well, that can't be true then, could it? Because then the whole world's going to die out. And you can't have them in the first place without mummy and daddy. So it can't, so that it will dismiss that. It'll overlook those facts. It'll overlook the truth, you see, because it'll, it'll rob you of the truth. Because it's a lie. And that's my simple testimony and invitation. And if you you can be healed and, and have that understanding beyond what I could possibly understand because it's, it, it, it would be the individual going through it that would meet their maker and he would meet that person's individual need and help them from that point onwards throughout their life however long it takes that person to come to that understanding to overcome that difficulty to then be able to go on and reach out to other people so that would be the gift that the Lord would give that person free he would pick them up pull them out clean them up and set them off on their feet rejoicing and happy and bounding like a brand new baby newborn child and every day will be a new life because there's only one life and it's free so i'm going to close there in the name of jesus christ amen